We've styled the box layout for the Movies List page. Now we'll begin to add more detailed styling. Starting at the top of the page with the header and the top navigation, the list of users, and the links to the admin pages. I want to have sans serif font for the whole of the website. And there's a very easy way to do this. We can style every item by using the global style selector, which is an asterisk. We'll put that right at the top. And we'll put inside that the declaration font family. We'll just give it sans serif. Go back and refresh, and you can see that the fonts have changed throughout. We'll also apply a global font size. of 16 pixels, and we use this fixed size to apply relative sizes to everything else on the page. Then we'll give the header a grey background colour, using a hex code, hex codes are prefixed by the hash character, and we'll give it the background colour F1, 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 which is a grey colour. Looking at index.html, this h1 inside the header element is going to be targeted in the style sheet using the parent child selector header h1. We'll give this a font size of 1.5 m. Ms are a relative size, relative to the global font size that we've just specified, which was 16 pixels. So 1.5m is 1.5 times 16 pixels, which is 24 pixels. Notice it's 1.5m written together. There mustn't be any space between the value and the unit, as with pixels. And also, it's always m, never m's. The advantage of using relative sizes like this is that if we ever want to change all the sizes of the whole website, we can just change the global size, and all the other text will change in proportion. We won't need to make multiple changes all the way through the style sheet. We'll give this header a font weight bold. And we'll space it out from the left with a margin left of 50 pixels. The header, as we've seen up here, has a height of 50 pixels. And the way to get text to align vertically to the middle of a box is to apply the same line height property as the height of the box. So we'll give it a line height also of 50 pixels. Save and refresh. And we'll see that the header is now styled as we want it. Now we'll style the H2 second level heading tag, which displays the selected moviegoer's name as a link. That's here. So what we've got here is we've got select users, which is a parent of H2, and then inside H2 we've got an anchor tag. So to style this, we go down to below select users. With style things, it doesn't matter what order you put these styles in the style sheet. Just something which is easy to read has some logic to it. So um, I generally do the parents and then the children. So we've got select users there, and then we do the ch child of select users just below it. And we'll look a bit later how to group things to make them a bit more efficient if we ever want to make changes. So we style this H2 using a complex selector. Parent is the class select users, then H2, and then we're styling the anchor tag inside it. We want to give this a bold font weight. I'm going to give it a relatively small font size of only 0.9m. I want to override the default link color, which is blue, and give it a color of black. 
And I also want to remove the default underlining which a link normally has. We do this using text decoration. None. Now there's no way to know that this is a link. So I'm going to give it a different appearance when the mouse hovers over it. So we need to use the same complex parent-child selector. So I'll just copy that and paste it in here. And we're going to give it the pseudo selector hover, which we do with colon hover. I'll give it a hover color with another hex code. And this matches the scheme, the color scheme of the YouTube website. Save and refresh. And when we hover over that, now we can see it's a link and we get that dark red color. We've already got some styling for the unordered lists in UL users and UL admin. So we can only see UL users because we've hidden the other one. Now I'm going to give them borders. They're going to, just looking at the finished version, they're going to butt, they're both going to butt right up to the right hand side of the screen. So they don't need borders all the way around. They only need a border down the left and at the bottom. So I'll assign these two borders, border left, and it'll be one pixel, solid, gray. Now I'll copy that and do the same for border bottom. And I'm also going to assign the same background color that I gave to the header, which is hash F1, F1, F1. So the two navigation lists so far will look alike, but I'm going to give them different widths. So that eventually this one is wider than this one. So we'll style UL users on its own. And I'll give it a width of 200 pixels. UL admin, we've got set to display none. We'll change that later. And I'll give this a width of 150 pixels. Now for the list items within these ULs, these unordered lists. So we have UL. The class is users, so it's going to be dot .users. And then inside that we have li, and then inside that we have an anchor tag again. So we're going to target this using dot .users lia, another complex parent-child selector. Again, I'm going to style them both alike. So we can do another comma-separated list and put in admin. LIA here as well. Give them both a small font size of 0.75m. And I'll give them a bit of internal padding to make some space around them and bulk out the list items a bit. Padding 5 pixels. Now we'll style the hover states for these list items. Again, both lists will be alike. So we use the same selector, except we have to append hover onto the end of each of them. We'll give them the same dark red background color, which is A32824. Again, to match YouTube's color scheme. And we'll give the text the color white. Save and refresh, and we're getting that to look much more like we want it. Matching the final version. The only thing is that if you mouse over the links now, you see them change colour. You see the links change colour, but it'd be much nicer if the whole block would change colour, like this. And if we could click anywhere in it, and the link would work at the moment, we have to click on the text. It won't work if we click out over here. We do this by assigning to dot users lia and dot admin lia the display setting of block.
and that will solve that problem. And now, and now the whole of the LI area, not just the text, is an active link and the color changes the way that we want. Over here in the final version, the colors are a bit different. We've got no underlining, we've got black text which becomes white when we hover over it. To solve this, we give ul.users, so that's the unordered list with the class users, a, the anchor tag, and ul, the unordered list with the admin tag and the anchor tag inside that, the styles text decoration none to take away the underlining, and color black. to take away the default color of blue from the link. Go back and refresh, and we've now got that the way we want. We've got the header styled, we've got the red hover there, we've got the same red for the background, and we've got the black text turning to white when we mouse over it. We just check, we go back to style, we move display none from UL admin to UL users. Just go back, refresh, and it works fine on the admin menu as well. Before we go on and style the rest of the page, let's just check this in all the browsers. Firefox, we've done. This is Opera. Just check the hover colors and all the styling. This is Google Chrome. All OK. This is Safari. OK. And Internet Explorer 10. Looks exactly the same. And we'll just check the other versions of Internet Explorer. If it prompts you about um, running scripts, then you have to say allow blocked content. And that's fine. Looks the same. Internet Explorer 8. Exactly the same. Nine is OK. And back to ten. So that's OK. No browser problems. And we can go on to styling the rest of the page.